Cl negative 1, Na plus 1, O 2 negative. Then on the right side, plus 1, negative 1, plus 1, plus 1, because 2 hydrogen atoms and 2 negative. Yeah? So these are all the oxidation numbers. So you can see the oxidation number of hydrogen is the same, it's plus 1. The oxidation number of chlorine is the same, minus 1 on both sides. The oxidation number of sodium is the same, plus 1 on both sides. The oxidation number of oxygen is the same, 2 negative, minus 2 on both sides, minus 2 on both sides. So this brings us to the conclusion that this reaction is not a redox reaction. This reaction is not a redox reaction because nothing has been oxidized, nothing has been reduced. All the oxidation numbers are the same. So actually neutralization reactions, which are basically the reactions between acids and alkalis, they are not redox reactions. Neutralization reactions are not redox reactions because nothing has been oxidized and nothing has been reduced. So you should look at the reaction and you, sh you, you should tell whether it's, an whether it's a redox reaction or it is not, looking at whether any changes in oxidation numbers have taken place, right? So you should be very clear about things like these. Now, disproportionation reactions. So disproportionation reactions are reactions where a species is both oxidized and reduced. So a very typical example for a disproportionation reaction is Cl2 plus H2O give, giving us HCl plus HClO. So these are the products. Now you can see that over here chlorine has an oxidation number of 0, right? But when you see over here in HCl, it has an oxidation number of negative 1. So from Cl2 to HCl, chlorine has reduced. But if you look at HClO, if you look at HClO, then oxi the, the, the oxidation state of, oxida uh, of oxygen is minus 2. The oxidation state of hydrogen is plus 1. And let's say the oxidation of, uh, state of chlorine is x. And we know that 1 plus x minus 2 should all add up to 0. So when I calculate x, I actually get 2 minus 1, which is 1, plus 1. So the oxidation state of chlorine in this compound is plus 1. It is plus 1. Now you can see from here to here, chlorine has oxidized. So from Cl2 to HCl, it goes from 0 to minus 1. From Cl2 to HClO, it goes from 0 to plus 1. And uh, you can see that for, for, uh, from Cl2 to HCl, it has reduced. From Cl2 to HClO, chlorine has oxidized. So th this is called a disproportionation reaction because chlorine is both reduced and oxidized, right? So just remember that a disproportionation reaction is one in which a species is both oxidized and reduced. Let's move forward now. So let's do a quick exercise. Most of the sulfur that is used in the contact process, the, the contact process is when sulfur is used to form um, sulfuric acid. So the most of the sulfur that is used in the contact process is recovered from sulfur compounds present in crude oil and natural gas by using the clause process. Okay. In this process, which is the clause process they are talking about, about one third of the hydrogen sulfide, H2S, present in the oil or gas is converted into sulfur dioxide. Balance the equation for this reaction. So we, we they have told us that H2S plus O2 gives us SO2 plus water that they have already given us what we have to do is balance this equation. So let's look at the oxidation numbers. The oxidation number of each hydrogen in this one is plus 1 and plus 1 because there are 2. So the total oxidation number contrib contributed by hydrogen is plus 2. And then the oxidation number of sulfur is minus 2, right? It is minus 2 because the overall oxidation number of H2S is 0. So, in H2S, sulfur is in the minus 2 oxidation state, or we should say 2 negative, better to say 2 negative. 
and when we go to SO2, now oxygen will have an oxidation state of 2 negative and there are